Hi everyone, it is week five of YC. In case you missed it last week, we were given the opportunity to live launch our tools to our YC group at our Monday night dinner and to integrate it directly into the YC Slack. So of course we said yes, and then we worked nonstop through the weekend to get things ready for Monday night. It is 1.13 a.m. on Friday. It's 1.30. It is 2 a.m. Getting some real food. We came into Monday pretty sleep deprived, completely exhausted, but it was totally worth it because the presentation went extremely well. Here's some footage right after the Monday night dinner as we were leaving the YC office. We did it guys. We launched. How do you feel? Good. How did it go? I think it went well. It went really wow. damn well. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Lena did a phenomenal job. Total, total home run. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, they all are really into it. They're laughing like pretty much the whole time. Uh, so it was good. <laughs> I mean, it was a total home run. Like it couldn't have gone better. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can go up to 10. We celebrated a bit. We went to a nice dinner, had some hot tub time. And then on Tuesday, we completely crashed. You know, this is always the trade-off for me personally of pushing through the weekend and not taking Saturdays off is that I end up paying for it later that week. In this case, it was completely the right decision because we needed to push through and get things over the hump for our Monday night event. But because we did that, we didn't do our normal Sunday night planning. We didn't take a step back and think about where we wanted to be at the end of this week. Sunday planning is my number one entrepreneurship life hack. I've been running my own companies for the past four years and Sunday nights I get together with my co-founders, we take a step back and we plan the week. And when we do that, the week goes well. And when we don't, the week has a very high likelihood of going sideways. So after our Monday night launch, I'd say we floundered for maybe like 24 to 36 hours. We were doing a bunch of stuff, but not necessarily the right stuff until we finally got back on the right track. We had a few power users emerge from our launch on Monday. So we focused on doing whatever we could to support them. We ended up cloning them so they could make videos, AI videos of themselves. And then the second big thing is we focused on making content using our own tools. We made a bunch of mini shows that we shared with the YC community. And I'll say it was actually really fast and easy to make this content using our tool. You know, compared to my usual process here for YouTube where I'm live recording things and I have to do multiple takes. Um, the process of being able to just type out a script, press a button and get a video out was so fast and easy. I could very precisely iterate on the script, get exactly what I wanted out. And it was just a really cool experience to see that and experience that. And then on Friday, I thought we were gonna give an unconference talk and get to release our tool to the broader YC community. But unfortunately, the talks were canceled. I was bummed about that. But instead, I got to meet Naval Ravikant, who is incredible, and Erevin Srinivasas, who's the co-founder and CEO of Perplexity. That was amazing. And I actually made a mini video using our AI tool, uh, summarizing my favorite takeaways from Erevin's talk. So if you're curious, go check that out. I'll link it below. And then in a totally unexpected twist, we still got to present to the broader YC community anyways. There is this event that Gary Tan, the president of YC, hosts every two weeks and where different startups get invited to present what they're building. And there was one happening this Friday. So an hour before the event started, Jared, our YC partner, asked, hey, do you want to present at this event? We said yes. And so Jared and Gabby got us on the lineup. So one hour before the event, we were frantically trying to put together our presentation and what we were going to say, but we did it. And in the end, we won best overall presentation. Uh, Mike Noop, who's the co-founder of Zapier, gave the awards. And so we got this awesome little Zapier bot trophy. And so we ended the week on a total high. It feels amazing that people loved our demo, loved our tool. We got a lot of people coming up to us after. We also got a, lo a lot of love on Twitter. But you know, however good that feels, it obviously feels very good to get these dopamine hits of people saying you're doing a good job it is dangerous to chase that. We had allocated this week as our launch week to get our tool out there, get feedback from the real world. We did it, it was really useful. And now it's time to get back to building the tech. We have a product that basically, if it, the tech works really well, people will use it. And if it doesn't, they won't. And we know that we can make the tech so, so much better than what it is today. So time to get back to work and get building. And my main lesson that I learned this week 
is that when you get an opportunity, take it. Doing things and putting yourself out there only increases your surface area for luck. And I have a saying that I started saying to myself pretty much every day this year. If I work hard and put myself out there every single day, I will reach my full potential. It really takes both the hard work and the putting yourself out there because chance favors the prepared mind. Thank you guys again so, so much for listening. I am very curious if what I said resonated about needing both hard work and putting yourself out there and which one do you think you need more of in your life?